Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're continuing this problem on Sherry's shuttles. We've just prepared our income statement. Now we're going to move on to part B. And part B has us preparing a statement of changes in equity or statement of changes in shareholders' equity. So uh, let's get to it. I, I kind of mentioned at the outset, this is basically what a statement of changes in shareholders equity does. We say, what did we start with in all of our shareholders equity accounts? So common shares, retained earnings in this case, but we could have preferred shares or there are other equity accounts that exist. And we say, how did they change? So for common shares, it's if we issue or repurchase shares for retained earnings, it's the net income and any dividends the companies had. And uh, for other accounts, we'll worry about when we see them. So uh, let's get started with our statement of changes in shareholders equity. As with all financial statements, just like we did with the income statement, we start with a title. The title is a three-liner. The three lines are name of the company, Sherry's Shuttles. Name of the financial statement. This is a statement of changes in equity shareholders equity. Uh, and it could be shareholders equity. I'm calling it a statement of changes in equity. The last thing is the, uh, the date and it's for the year ended December 31st, 2017. And again, it gets dated with that specific phrase for the year ended. It could again be for the month ended, for the quarter ended. I was trying to draw a straight line here. That's not a lie. That was attempted to be a straight line. And look at that. Just horrific. Uh, this is what it is to have a shaky hands. It's, uh, I do that often. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's continue. So our statement of change in shareholders' equity, we say, okay, what did we have for shareholders' equity at the beginning of the year? And what's the beginning of the year? Well, if it ends on December 31st, it began on January 1st. Now, of course, we could have fiscal years that don't match the calendar, right? We could have a year that begins on March 1st and ends on April 30th the next year. Is that right? No. Uh, March 1st and ends on February 28th the next year. That's 365 days yet later. Um, we can have uh, fiscal years that begin on like January 8th and end on January 7th, you know, like fiscal years don't have to be at the beginning and end of a month either. But this one happens to be, and it makes it easier to wrap your head around. That's why we, we do it this way when we're learning. So, what equity accounts did I have on January 1st, 2017? Let's highlight our equity accounts, uh, some different color. We had, oops, I've gone up too far. Oh, no, I haven't. Um, we have had, or we have common shares, and we have retained earnings. I might be looking here for some other accounts, like uh, uh AOCI, as I mentioned, or uh, um, preferred shares, but we don't have any of those. Um, the other thing that's going to be relevant here is my dividends. They haven't come into play so far, but they're going to come into play here. So it's worth kind of bringing a highlight to them. Okay. So, oops, I'm going to go back up to the question. My common shares were 60000 My retained earnings were 10000 and those were both on... Uh, January 1st. So our heading is actually the names of these accounts. So I've got common shares, I've got retained earnings, and I've got total. So my common shares were 60 on January 1st, my retained earnings were 10. On January 1st, my total, therefore, is 70 on uh, January 1st. That's how much shareholders' equity I had. Now, what happened during the year? Did I issue or repurchase any common shares? And the answer there is no. As noted, the company did not issue or repurchase any shares during the year, so nothing happened to my common shares. What happened to my retained earnings? Well, it increases by the amount of the profit, by the amount of the net income of the company, it decreases by the amount of the dividends. So I did have profit. I made $20,700, so I'm going to add that. I note that I had net income of $20,700. I also had dividends. 
And I do have to total this. I have to say, okay, well, my total net income was 20700 I had dividends as well. And my dividends, I highlighted in blue up there, three grand. So dividends negatively impact my retained earnings. I put them in brackets here. That's it. So I didn't have any common shares issued or repurchased. I didn't have any other equity accounts. Those are my only changes. So now I just need to say, okay, well, what was it at the end of the year? What was it on December 31st, 2017? My total common shares were 60,000. Again, just adding down. 10,000 plus 20,700 minus 3,000 is 27,700. So the grand total here is 87,700. Double underline underneath each of these. Dollar sign at the top of each column. And next to the bottom of each column, the any bottom line, which there's three here. So there we have a good formatted statement of changes in equity. Some textbooks might just have you do a statement of retained earnings, which is basically the retained earnings column. Uh, and that's easier than this. So I figure if you can do this one, you can do a statement of retained earnings as well. Okay, that's it for this piece of the video. Next part is the balance sheet.